morning and a very warm welcome to morning prayer from St Mark's Church, Peterborough. It's Thursday the 2nd of July. Let us pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 130 Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my cry. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord kept a record of sins. Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are worshipped. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O oh Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Mark, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we have a bit of a respite today, a respite from the heavy stuff. Uh, two days ago, we had a passage talking about hell. Yesterday, we had a very difficult passage talking about marriage and divorce. Tomorrow, we've got a passage talking about money. And in the midst of it, we have this rather gentler passage of the little children coming to Jesus. It's one of the most popular passages in stained glass windows, especially in the Victorian period. Beloved of illustrators and of poster makers. Um, picturesque and classic. And it's set amongst two don'ts, two passages about things to not do. Last week was about not being unfaithful. Oh, sorry, yesterday's passage. The previous passage was about not being unfaithful. And the next passage is about not being obsessed with material possessions. Two don'ts. And in the midst is a do. Do be like a little child. For as much as we might think of this as a, a passage belonging on stained glass windows, it's clearly a very serious thing Jesus is saying. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. 
This is important. This is serious. If we want to enter the kingdom of God, we need to do so like a little child. So what is it we are to emulate? How are we to be like a little child? Cuteness? It's a bit too late for that for most of us. Innocence? People still persist in the idea that little children are innocent. I can only assume they've never had to babysit a couple of toddlers. <laughs> most, ch most children can be very selfish and very cruel to one another. They're as human as, as adults are in that regard, if not more so. It's clearly not innocence. Maybe it's humility. Children were at the very bottom of the social ladder in those days. And certainly there, certainly there is something about the kingdom of God belonging to the meek and the humble. But even more than that, the humility and the lowliness, I think it's a very specific sort of meekness that is distinctive to children. And that's that children know how to receive. They know how to receive because they are dependent, dependent on their parents for everything. It's one of the distinctives, I believe, of humans as a species, that our children are dependent for a very long time. In our society, probably until 16, 18, 21, we are dependent upon our parents to some degree or other. Children know how to receive, how to depend. Adults fairly quickly lose that. I remember um, two friends of mine when I was at university having a conversation. We were going to go out for a meal and one friend said, uh, no, I can't do that. I can't afford to eat out this, this month. Uh, at which his friend turned, <coughs> turned around and said, oh, that's OK, I'll buy it for you. Oh, no, 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 I, I don't want to be in your debt. That's OK, it's a gift. No, no, I'll pay you back. No, it's a gift. And the conversation went on in that vein for a while. It was really hard for him to accept a gift from someone. Really hard to receive. Maybe some of that was pride. Not wanting to benefit from somebody else's generosity. Maybe some of it was just cynicism, that there's no such thing as a free lunch or a free dinner in this case. But he had very quickly learned not to receive, not to depend. Maybe there's wisdom to that attitude in human affairs, but certainly not in divine, because salvation is something we have to receive. We cannot win it. We cannot earn it. We can only be given it. It's hard for us sometimes to accept that, especially as adults who are used to the idea that we should earn everything we have. And sometimes people keep trying to earn it, keep somehow saying to God, oh, I'll pay you back. You can't pay him back, not for salvation. You can't earn the death of God for you. Nothing is worth that. You can't pay him back. You can only receive. We have to receive the gift of salvation. Like a child at Christmas, opening a wonderful present. Not, I'll find a way to pay you back, but, wow, thanks, Dad. If we're going to enter the kingdom, it can't be marching in in our own strength. It's not something we can win that way. We enter the kingdom with wide-eyed gratitude, thankful and humble and dependent, because it's not something we can do, but something that is done for us. And that means anyone can enter, because we don't have to do something or achieve something or earn something. We only have to receive something and receive it with open hands and humble hearts. The doors of the kingdom stand open to anyone who is humble enough to walk through them and receive them as a little child. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God of all creation, who has come to us in Jesus, that gift of love. Help us neither to be too proud to receive it or too cynical. What do we have to pay back? Help us to receive it as a gift, a gift from God. Just ask. Not Jesus is knocking on the door. Allow him to enter and receive the gift. Lead us in your way of love and fill us with your spirit. Choose us to take good news to the poor. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Bring sight to the blind. And set free the oppressed. So shall your new creation come and your will be done. Spirit of truth and judgment, who alone can cast out the powers that grip our world at the point of crisis. We pray for the people in Leicester. Give us your discernment that we may accurately name what is evil and know the way that leads to peace through Jesus Christ. Spirit of integrity. We pray for those who use COVID as a cover for crime. Those who use social distancing, ignore it. Using others as their reason. Drive us into the desert to search out truth. Give us clarity to know what is right. That we may abandon the false innocence of failing to choose at all, but may follow the purposes of Jesus. God of history, you share our joys and crushing sorrows. We pray for all people in refugee camps, as widows, those who are bereaved, families who are orphaned. Pray for their many needs. Their need for nursing. Their need for food and clothes. Their need to find peace. Their need to 
find a country that will give them a home. You hear the cries of the afflicted. You feel the hungry. You set free the oppressed. We pray for the end to all injustice. Inspire us with all embracing love of God. Challenge us with the sacrifice of the love of Jesus. Empower us with the transforming love of the Spirit that we and all God's people may live and be free. O oh Lord, life-giving Spirit, Spirit of healing and comfort, we pray for all who are bereaved, those who are bereaved worldwide, all now who are afraid to go out because social distancing is being ignored. Spirit of healing and comfort, of integrity and truth, we believe and trust in you. Warm winged spirit, brooding over creation, rushing wind and Pentecostal fire. Help us to commit ourselves to work with you and renew our world. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray a prayer for the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. God, who did lead the Blessed Virgin Mary to visit Elizabeth, to their exceeding deep joy and comfort, grant unto thy people that, as Mary did rejoice to be called the Mother of the Lord, so they may ever rejoice to believe the incarnation of thine only begotten Son, to whom we see the Holy Ghost, your honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. And we pray, call it for everyday things. Almighty God, you delight in the great and the small, the ordinary and extraordinary. Watch over us this day, we pray, in all we do and are. Guard us from temptation and danger. Guide our choices and our words, that with wisdom and grace we may bless those about us and being obedient in outward things. I'm sorry, and being obedient in outward things may be renewed inwardly in love and faith. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayer during coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. 
our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.